Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the Psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 12 in the douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 13 in the RSV. On to the end. A Psalm for David. Description of the Psalm. How long, O Lord, wilt thou forget me unto the end? How long dost thou turn away thy face from me? Contrasting with the absolute faith of the last psalm, here we have a person who is suffering for a long time and is pleading for some sign that reprieve is coming. These words seem to come from a place of near despair. He's not truly despairing, because he doesn't doubt that God can give him hope, but the amount of time that he's needed to wait is wearing on him. How long shall I take counsels in my soul, sorrow in my heart all the day? He feels that he's troubled and sad on a near constant basis. The phrase, take counsels, refers to deliberation, usually between multiple people, but here it seems to be a reference to inner deliberation over his actions or his situation. In other words, doubt. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? A very common sentiment among people in general. We all have opponents who gain unfair advantages over us in certain ways, especially those of us who choose to follow God, and who find that some of our enemies delight in trying to cheat their way to the top, while we have to use more honest, holy means, and don't seem to get quite as far. Consider, and hear me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes, that I never sleep in death, lest at any time my enemy say, I have prevailed against him. They that trouble me will rejoice when I am moved. There's no question that evil people do tend to see the death of their enemies as a victory of sorts. As Christians, we can see the deeper victory of heavenly glory on the other end of death, but to the people of ancient Israel, who had less understanding of the afterlife, the idea that a good man might die and fools might be left alive to gloat would seem not only unfair, but actually a blot on the reputation of God himself. By contrast, since we know that hell exists, we recognize that evildoers can never get the last laugh. There is no escape from God. There's only an escape to him. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. In spite of his emotional exhaustion and suffering, he still trusts that God is merciful and will find some way to make it all right, saving the good from the evil, which we now know to be entirely true. I will sing to the Lord who giveth me good things. Yea, I will sing to the name of the Lord, the Most High. God is indeed the ultimate source of all goodness. As it says in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, all things were made by him. Singing songs about God to praise him, thank him, and even make requests of him has a long history and tradition, both in the church and before the ministry of Jesus. This verse also expresses in no uncertain terms that God has higher authority than any other. In short, once again we have a psalm that begins with sadness and complaints, even more severe than in the last psalm, but the psalmist is still encouraged by his faith in the justice of God. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.